Her areas of expertise include uh, teacher quality and diversity, analyzing and closing racial achievement gaps in adolescent development. Her work has been published in very good journals. Um, she received a bachelor's degree in economics from Duke University and a master's degree in public policy from Georgetown. Before doctoral study at Northwestern, she was a presidential management fellow at the U.S. Department of Education. And uh, currently, her main focus on teacher diversity and how to obtain a high-quality, diverse uh, educator workforce. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm super excited uh, to talk to you guys today. I'm excited to get this invitation. I actually have not been to L.A. in quite some time. My favorite aunt lives here, and so she might... I think she's wandering around campus right now. So she might show up. Um, but yeah, so, so I'm excited to be here and happy to talk to you about um, some work that I have uh, with a colleague, um, Ana Egalite, who's at NC State University. And um, this research, I should mention, was um, initially funded via a Spencer Small Research Grant. And um, I wouldn't say, it's definitely not in a preliminary stage, but certainly in a stage where your feedback will be very valuable as we are trying to sort of land the plane <laughs> um, in terms of the analyses and where to go next and what would really make this an interesting paper, I think, for the field. Um, so today I'm going to talk about, um, we're, we're going to explore this question of what happens if you are uh, a black teacher um, and you're matched to a black principal, um, are you less likely to turn over? Uh, and what goes on, um, can you control that away, and, this, and can this get rid of turnover gaps that we see by race? So just to talk a little bit about the motivation behind the project, um, it kind of sits at the intersection of a few different um, strands of thinking. Uh, the first is sort of this more broad question about teacher turnover, uh, which we know is a problem for uh, many K-12 schools across the country, sort of regardless of of, of a teacher's race or anything like that, um, uh, we know that teacher turnover is problematic and it has negative impacts on student achievement. Um, it leaves them unsettled. This is pretty well established in the literature. We also know that schools that are high needs and hard to staff um, face uh, especially large challenges when it comes to turnover. And that this is particularly salient when we're thinking about closing achievement gaps, because we know um, the types of students that are more likely to be located in schools that are high needs and hard to staff. So there's sort of multiple things going on here. Uh, we also know, um, because it's a cottage industry now that I've contributed to, uh, studies that basically show that when um, students of color, um, and in particular most of the, 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 the studies are focused on black students, that when students of color are matched to a teacher of color, uh, they do better on a host of outcomes. And sort of this, this discussion around teacher diversity uh, has sort of moved from that initial stage of the pipeline, which I'll talk, talk a little bit um, more about, to sort of the latter stages of the teacher human capital pipeline, right? So we're concerned about diversity, we're concerned about representation, but then we also need to worry about keeping folks in the classroom once they're there. Um, and uh, the concomitant effects that might have on other outcomes for students. And this goal of reducing uh, turnover for teachers of color uh, has a lot of appeal, right? Because it's a low cost strategy. Once you've invested into getting these folks in the classroom, it makes sense to keep them there. And it also just makes sense to, to broaden our understanding of what types of policies can minimize teacher departures, right? Um, and so thinking about how we deploy our existing workforce and how we might um, increase diversity in the future are both lower cost ways than trying to use other types of interventions to, to mitigate some of these things. And then we also just kind of want to document the diversity or lack thereof in the principal pool and in the pipeline. I think um, one of the, so just to give you a little bit of uh, context about me, I was uh, just got to UNC Chapel Hill, I was most recently at the Urban Institute, and we have a few pieces that I'll, that I'll allude to today where we just really document sort of the state of the teacher workforce. And so that's just as important as sort of understanding these relationships because it gives us a key as to what we need to be doing with an eye toward the future. Um, so another piece of this is that the supply of teachers of color is really constrained by the number of college graduates of color, okay? So at its heart, the larger teacher diversity question 
is a college access issue, right? We don't have the numbers of BA holders of color that we want, right? So even when we get folks to major in teaching and to potentially proceed down the pathway to becoming a principal, uh, we're working with a smaller percent of a smaller number, all right? Um, and this also depends on how many folks are hired and how many folks stay in their profession. So I crunched um, some numbers from the teacher follow-up survey, which is um, the follow-up to the schools and staffing survey, which I'll also come back to. And we find that teachers of color leave the profession at a higher rate than white teachers. And the numbers here aren't that different. I didn't t-test them or anything. But remember, there's just a smaller pool that we're drawing from. So that, that larger number is going to have a, a, a bigger impact. Uh, we also find in the, they also, teachers, also, teachers of color also report in this uh, teacher follow-up survey that they change schools at a higher rate, right? So they're just engaged in more mobility, which we know also um, might be associated with negative outcomes for kids and you're probably not for students either. You don't want adults changing jobs too much unless, you know, it's sort of positive movement, right? Um, the other thing that's, that's interesting is that in the teacher follow-up survey, teachers can indicate sort of what was the reason for their move. And one of the options is to describe it as involuntary, okay? And so teachers of color are more likely to report their move as involuntary. So that might not be limited to personnel actions, right? It might also be the school was closed, and we know that teachers of color are more likely to be in schools that might be closed. There might be a variety of circumstances, but I think that's an interesting sort of descriptive point for us to think about as we're, we're thinking about these issues. And then they also identify school factors as the primary reason for both leaving the profession and changing schools. And so school factors is not, you know, some, it's a sort of an umbrella term, I think, for school culture, leadership, things along those lines. So unpacking these things is super important. So our conceptual framework is, is relatively straightforward, though. Um, what we're trying to do is basically explore whether being race matched to your principal uh, means that you are less likely to turn over. Uh, there's a huge body of work in the literature on principles and leadership and school culture that basically demonstrates that these interpersonal relationships um, between principals and teachers sort of um, influence teachers' opinions about school climate. And we know that school climate impacts uh, whether they're more likely to stay. And these are pathways that might be direct or indirect. And so this is, I'm gonna, the, the results I'm eventually going to show you are from administrative data. So we can't necessarily see what's happening. We can just see if there's a relationship there. But one thing I'd like for us to discuss when we get to the Q&A is ways in which we might be able to uncover some of the mechanisms that are driving the results. So just, so just to take a step back, um, we have lots of pipeline problems when it comes to both the teacher workforce and then the principal workforce. And so uh, one of the, the pieces that um, is up, up on Urban's website, if you're interested, that we put out, I don't know, in 2017, 2018, I don't know, one of those years, um, basically shows us that we have sort of gaps. So if you think about this, this human capital pipeline on the way from becoming, a from becoming a teacher, sort of being in the classroom to eventually becoming a principal, we're losing teachers of color along the way. And so this is just sort of reiterating the point I made earlier, but just in graphical format. And so what we did here was we took data from the census, the ACS, and we looked at, for those individuals who are the ages of 25 to 34, who said, I have a teaching degree, who's in the classroom? About, so the way you can interpret this is about 50% of um, black adults who are ages 25 to 34 who said, I have a teaching degree, are not teaching, okay? So that might represent a missed opportunity. Again, we don't know why they're not teaching, right? We just know that we invested all this money maybe in a teaching degree, and they're not in the classroom. So that, that, that could be problematic. It also could be positive attrition. They might decide, hey, this is not the thing for me. Same thing when it comes to um, folks being unemployed. Um, we do the same thing, even though unemployment rates, reported unemployment rates in the ACS for teachers are very low. Um, for black teachers, for example, they are double that of white teachers. So we have lots of sort of leaky, I think the Center for American Progress calls it like a <coughs> leaky pipeline of teaching or whatever metaphor you want to use, a funnel, say, whatever. Um, so, so just to um, give you some idea of what's happening nationally, I pulled data from the, um, the schools and staffing survey. And 
<laughs> um, and what, what I'm doing here is basically just showing you um, a descriptive t-test for the differences between um, urban principles and non-urban principles in the schools and, schools and staffing survey. And um, one of the things that we see nationally is that um, urban principles are a little bit older. They're a little bit less white. Um, they have a little bit less experience, uh, sort of overall experience um, in the profession. They also have uh, less experience at their, or less tenure at their current school. Um, they are more female than the sort of broader population. Um, you can ignore that, that public, private, or charter thing that doesn't make much sense to you. Uh, but there's lots of differences in terms of who's being staffed at particular schools. So one of the things that we're going to try to do when we're trying to sort of uncover this relationship between who's being matched to who is to account for differences in school types in terms of where um, teachers might be staffed or where principals might be staffed. Uh, and feel free to jump in if you have questions. You know, just remain silent. Um, this is just additional demographic data showing that, uh, for the most part, the principalship has remained white over time. So this is also taken from the school each iteration of the schools and staffing survey. Um, about in, as of 2015, about 85% of principals were white. Um, and so this is also, this is showing the numbers of women principals over time, which is growing, growing pretty directly, but still hasn't crossed 50% nationally, okay? So lots of, lots of issues of represent, representation around gender and race when it comes to the, the principal workforce. Okay, so these are um, principal demographics from North Carolina. And this is actually a, a not so great graph, but I have a point to it. Um, if this was my students, I would say this is a graph gone wild because it's like the same bars over and over again. Um, so th these are actually years. So this is 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018. What you see is that the gender sort of, um, so in, in North Carolina actually, the majority of principals are uh, women and that's been relatively stable over time, okay? Um, over here you have the race of principals also over time, which is very stable, and this actually just rounds down to zero because these numbers are like six out of 3,000. Or um, the, the um, Latinx was maybe like 20 out of 3,000. Um, for the bl black, black principals are pretty well represented in North Carolina, still not in comparison to the larger population, um, but some of these numbers are so low, so that's actually going to drive some of the analysis or the analytic choices that we make later. Uh, but the point is to say that if you think about this as like a pipeline over time, there's a lot of work that we might need to be doing. Um, so this just shows you, uh, this is a similar chart um, that shows you the, the racial and ethnic composition of teachers and students in North Carolina over time. So again, just the teacher workforce is very white. Uh, the numbers of white students uh, is, are, is going down. Uh, you see things sort of bounce around for black students, and the black teachers are also very flat. And then there's growing numbers of Latinx students. And so, um, and, and this number is just, if I were to pull this out to 2018, it's just getting, the, the slope is just, you know, it's still it's pretty steep when it comes to the Latinx kids, which I think is actually an opportunity. So if there's grad students in the room, this is definitely a place where you can insert yourself into the literature. Um, but there's just not a lot of um, Latinx teachers and administrators. So I'm not going to be able to do much with that particular population. So I just want to throw that out there before, because you're going to ask me, well, why didn't you? Well, that's why. Um, okay. So lots of challenges around representation. Okay. And um, North Carolina isn't that different than lots of places. Now, of course, in a place like um, Los Angeles, things are going to look a lot different. Um, one of the things that I think might be interesting is to explore some of these relationships in more multicultural settings. Um, this is, you know, some of, this, some of the work that's been done on this topic is an artifact of um, where the data, the states where the data comes from. So like the Floridas, the North Carolinas, the Tennessees. So I think there's tremendous opportunity there for um, students. Okay, um, and so we know these gaps are problematic for many reasons. You guys have probably all, all read this stuff a billion times, but I will uh, refresh your memory. So there's a very nice piece by Jason Grissom and his colleagues where um, he extends the, the, um, the, the relatively extensive public administration bureaucratic representat representation literature 
to education, okay? And so basically the argument there is relatively straightforward, right? The, um, the you know, if you think of teachers and principals as street level bureaucrats, anytime you have a public service, you want those, the people who are interfacing with your clients to represent the people that they're serving, right? And um, what's nice in the PA literature is that they've done it in, you know, folks have explored this topic in all kinds of areas, so not just limited to education. Um, and, you know, since we have these nice, long, longitudinal data sets, we can now explore some of these matches ourselves. Um, but it's, you know, I just actually saw something come across Twitter last night that was looking at even um, representation of, like, prison guards or something, right? So this is an interesting question um, that people are exploring. And then we have this, like I said, this cottage industry now of, um, of studies that basically show that there, is, there are benefits to having a same race teacher. We have the original Tom D studies. Um, my, my colleague Seth Gershenson and Nick Papa George have the educational attainment study. Um, I have a study on discipline outcomes with Cassie Hart, who's at UC Davis. And then we also, a bunch of us, have a study that looks at long run outcomes. So if you're matched to, if you're a black student matched to a um, same race teacher in both Tennessee and North Carolina, you are less likely to drop out of high school um, and more likely to attend college, okay? So we know this stuff matters, and um, we think it's important, so we gotta keep our teachers of color in the classroom once they're in there. Hopefully I've convinced you of that. Um, in the past, <laughs> so in the past uh, few years, though, um, people have been starting to explore this question of sort of what's happening in the school uh, using the schools and staffing survey, okay? Um, and so there are a couple of nice papers that basically look at um, job satisfaction, because that's something that the SAS is able to measure. And um, so there's an Olson and Hong study that just came out that basically shows that racially incongruent teacher-principal pairs leads to a decreased level of job satisfaction. So what does that mean? That means, so, so sort of flips out a race match, right? That means I'm a white teacher who's matched to a black principal. Uh, on average, I'm more likely to report that I'm less satisfied with my job, okay? I think the thing, though, to keep in the back of your mind, too, that I don't necessarily address in this particular study, but is that, think about the fact that a lot of schools are segregated, right? So it's going to be relatively unique circumstances where people are, where, like, you have a white teacher with a black principal. Um, and in the SAS, one of the challenges of the SAS, if you're thinking about using it for dissertation or something like that, is that it doesn't have very large samples of black respondents, okay? And so this is why um, um, all things being equal, if we can access administrative data, um, that's just the, you know, the straight up population of a district or a state or something along those lines, uh, we can look at, um, we can do some more interesting things than, that folks have been able to do with the SAS, although the SAS is super, super interesting. Um, uh, there's also uh, Viano and Hunter um, look at the SAS over time again, and they look at uh, racial, so the same racial incongruence um, over time and then by region, okay? And they find the same thing with regard to job satisfaction, and they find it's driven mostly by the white teachers working with black principals rather than the black teachers being more satisfied than when work, working with black principals, okay? Um, but they also find that this is reduced over time, which I think is positive. <laughs> uh, and it, all of these effects are larger in the South than any other region in the US, okay? So you can think about, there's probably other stuff going on there that obviously we wouldn't pick up in the, the survey data, or in that particular survey. Um, there's also a study that, um, I believe this is a qualitative study that looks at um, teacher principal, so the race piece and teacher principal trust in North Carolina. Um, and they find that when you're racially matched, it leads to higher levels of trust at all levels of schooling, um, but the biggest at the elementary school level. Um, and then there's also a very nice paper that looks at this, this match and labor market behaviors, okay? So job searching, job changing, job applying. Are you more likely to apply for a job if you know that the principal is a, is a teacher, is a principal of color? Um, so all of this stuff is, is super informative, and so we're basically just going to explore these issues using the North Carolina data. Um, they also found that teachers are less likely to turn over, basically less likely to seek a new position when working with a principal of the same race. So maybe 
I don't know. It's not that depressing. Everybody looks very depressed. It's not that depressing. <laughs> um, okay, so our research questions, though, are relatively straightforward. Um, we're basically asking, does having a same race principle impact teacher turnover? Okay. And then we're going to also look at gender. I'll give you a spoiler alert. We don't really find much for gender, um, and I'd be curious to hear what you guys have to say about that. And then basically, do we see subgroup effects? And so this is going to end up being black teachers in our sample um, because of uh, some of the things that I showed you earlier with regard to sort of who's, who's available to us in North Carolina. Sorry. Yeah. Just clarifying question. So when you say a same race principle, that means you'll be comparing the white teachers with the white principal and the African-American teachers and so on and so forth. Yes, so this, so this will be race matched. Race matched. Race matched, yes. So it's interesting, um, depending on sort of where you uh, sit in well, sort of what your subfield is, different people call it different things. So they'll talk about congruence, incongruence, ethnic matching, race matching. Um, I don't necessarily have a preference, but uh, we, we just do it this way, but you could obviously do it the other way too. Okay, um, so just to give you some um, analytic sample demographics. Um, so, so let me tell you how we built it first. Sorry, I'll go back. So, so what we do is we use um, student level data, or individual, excuse me, individual level data from North Carolina. And this includes teachers from school year that ended in 2015 through, it actually goes through 2018 now. And what's nice about the North Carolina data is that they, um, they make it such that um, all of the files are easily linkable, right? So you can look at personnel files, you can look at pay files, you can look at different school characteristics. Um, and this is actually housed at Duke, which I cannot say when I'm at UNC. <laughs> Uh, you're very angry. <coughs> I'm, waiting to, I'm waiting for basketball season. <laughs> um, so, so few restrictions though. Um, we have to limit to teachers and principals for whom we have demographic information, which is a good chunk of them. There's about five percent that we that we get rid of, and then we also capture teachers and principals who are in place that third pay period of the year. Okay. So I'm making some assumptions about stability and things along those lines. One of the things that I have not done yet, but do plan to do, is also do a snapshot from the spring and sort of do, you know, for who's there. So for right now, we're doing turnover from year to year, but you can imagine we can do some, some other things as well. So just to go back. So once we put all that together, we come up with about, um, I'll, I'll show the number uh, a little bit later, but it's between 300 and 400,000 um, teacher years, teacher person years. So in any given year, there's about 120,000 teachers in North Carolina, sort of give or take, and about six or 7,000 principals, okay? So um, a particular teacher, in this case, can appear up to four times. So where was he or she on September 3rd of 2014, 15, 16, 17, uh, or 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so when we smash all that together, um, here's what we get in terms of the demographics for the analytic sample. Okay. So uh, that, particular, um, that particular group, about 14% of the teachers are black, 25% uh, of the principals are black, which means they're overrepresented, which is also super interesting. Um, I also, even though I don't um, do anything with it for today's analyses, I also pulled the percent of assistant principals who are black because I was interested sort of in this pipeline question. And we actually find that 30% of the APs are black, which is, which is interesting. And I've heard, um, I've heard uh, different, I know there's lots of qualitative work on what roles um, assistant principals of color play. So that's definitely something I might unpack sort of later on. Um, the, 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 in terms of gender, the teacher is about 80% female or 80% women. We knew that. The principal is about 60%, so in North Carolina doing a little bit better than nationally in terms of that representation piece, and about 64% of the APs are, are women. Okay. Um, so this is just our teacher turnover measure, which I'll, I'll come back and talk to a little bit more, but basically we're capturing if you switched schools at any time, right? so at least once over the course of that time period. Um, and we find that, so the, the overall average is about 36%, which I think I'll come back to, uh, but that the, um, 
the teachers of color turn over more than the white teachers. So, but remember, um, these numbers are very low, okay? So, um, I'm not trying to represent that they're like equally uh, represented here. This is just the breakdown by, by race according to the, uh, um, this is straight from the NC, the administrative data. Okay. Sorry, so just, uh, just yeah. a quick clarification. Yes. Is that it should be Native American. American. That's how, North, I meant to do a disclaimer. That's how they, uh, the North Carolina, that's how they record it. Um, and it's actually quite interesting because there are Native American populations in North Carolina um, uh, that are, they're like, they're basically um, in one county. Um, so if you've ever heard of UNC Pembroke, mm -hmm. that's where a lot of the, um, I think they're Lumbee, well, they call themselves Lumbee Indians are located. Yeah. Um, but super interesting. But not enough of them to be included here. Okay. Um, so just to give you a preview of findings, uh, we find that race match is consistently associated with lower rates of teacher turnover. So just kind of overall, and that a lot of this is driven by black teacher match. And we don't find much evidence of um, sex match effects, okay? Which I'm also quite curious about, but there just wasn't that much there. So, so again, Quick yeah. question. Uh -huh. So I'm intrigued by the Latino population. So we yeah. know that there are not many principals. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be interesting to explore mm -hmm. whether they're less likely to mm -hmm. move if they're matched to an African American leader. Just going broader on your mm -hmm. definition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there, we certainly could just do like a a URM. Well, they're not really underrepresented, but they uh, like throw them all into one category. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think there might be, it, some of this might be just an artifact of how they collect the data, because you gotta pick one race category, so, um, so it might not be the best measure of the, the Latinx population. That's, that's my, I don't know that for sure, it's my speculation. Okay, um, okay so in terms of our, um, our outcome, it's just teacher turnover. So like I said, it's defined as changing schools at least once over the course of the, these school years. And then if you change schools, you're recorded as having experienced turnover. Um, we also I'll present a very preliminary table towards the end where we look at turnover between districts, and the patterns are basically the same. And I'll also just say that um, in these analyses for now, it, this is, you can really interpret this as LEAs, so this is actually going to capture movement between charters, because in NC, the districts are charters. Each charter is its own district. Uh, but I don't separate out charters just yet. Um, and then the main independent variable is this teacher principal demographic match. Okay. Yeah. So that so changing schools at least once. So like, are, how are you like stacking observations or like what? So what? So okay. So now a teacher switches schools and now they have a principal who is a different race. Then are they back in the data or? Are, I'm just a little bit confused about. Yeah. So you get. So you basically get. Um, so I'm only going to capture like one uh, uh, one turnover, basically. Got it. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I could also do I could let it turn back on and off uh -huh. over time. We could do I could also do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why the? I'm curious about the focus on I guess switching schools instead of like exit. So do you capture that at all? Like exit out of the, the profession. Yeah. Um. So I can capture that. I have not captured that here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But we we definitely can. And another thing I was wondering was about, um, like maybe doing a, some kind of survival mm -hmm, model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if you have plans to do that with new teachers. Yes. So I am going to, um, I am going to look at novice teachers, um, and we could set it up for sure as a survival model. You're getting a lot right now. Um, another, <laughs> another one might be to think about um, match not just with the principal, but with anybody on the administrative team, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. which might be, a, I, don't, I don't know what the data look like, but mm -hmm. um, it might be interesting in terms of gender, especially, yeah. because I wonder if there, um, there's more representation on the administrative team. Right. Gender. Yeah, so that, that's a good point. So, um, so what I'm doing here, so I can only see for right now, I mean, I can explore this, but basically what I'm doing is I'm taking um, where the person was in September, what their like budget code was, basically, 
Um, so I can only see you if you are formally assigned as an AP or a principal to that school. I don't know that I could capture like the broader administrative team, although I might be able to. I certainly could see if there are multiple um, APs per school. Um, did you have anything in mind besides APs for the administrative team? Well, I was just thinking like, yeah, so I mean mostly, but like if you have a male, like if you're a female teacher and you have a male assistant principal mm -hmm. and then like a female assistant right, principal, right, potentially yeah. like that's doing, I mean I'm just thinking about the, the kind of theory underlying that mm -hmm, so potentially mm -hmm. that's actually satisfying mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. those variables. Um, those that's are, right. right? Yeah. Whereas like if you have two, if you're working under two males, potentially like that would actually be the, the case of not. Mm -hmm. Not having a match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean I, that's a great point. I so yeah, I do have the APs. I don't include them in these initial analyses, but certainly could. Right, because you sure. could. I mean, it would maybe just be a robustness check, but you could mm -hmm. just have like, um, just like match with anybody on the administrative. Building on that, yeah. I, I, at least in my experience in teaching, it's, um, mm -hmm. more of my interaction is actually with the AP than with mm -hmm. the school itself mm -hmm. uh, or him or herself, and so I think that would be. I would argue beyond a robust check. Uh -huh. Also, that might be like an indication of culture, right? Like you could imagine like a very like male dominated culture or like white dominated culture. That sure. That maybe um, that's what that's going to be. Yes. Those are great points. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, did you have a um, differentiation between private and public or independent schools? In yeah, school? that's a great question. So these are going to be public schools. Okay. Yeah, so these are all public schools of basically all types. So mm -hmm. charters are in here, okay. magnets, all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so the data, so what happens is the Department of Public Instruction in North Carolina has an agreement with um, uh, Duke to get all the data. So it's coming from the, so it's all the public schools, basically. Any other questions? See, I should have said no questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, okay, so, so basically what we're doing is we're just going to run um, an OLS regression, an LPM, with the uh, 0, 1 indicator. So we have this binary turnover indicator um, where you have this um, race match variable as sort of the main independent variable. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to add a school fixed effect, okay? So we're going to compare teachers that are within the same school. Um, and so our preferred model is just going to be, um, we're going to have the school fixed effect, and we're going to add some teacher controls and some school controls, even though we have that, that school fixed effect. So the way that you can, um, oh, so just to talk a little bit about some of the descriptive stats, um, like I said, about 36% of the teachers change schools at least, yeah. Sorry to go back to the model. Yeah. So is this similar to the model that's used in the student teacher literature? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, mm -hmm. you know, I yeah. mean, like what 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 do you what are your thoughts about selection in this process and this process being different from the way because students don't really get to select their teachers right. most of yes. the time. Yeah, yeah. Whereas here it's very clear uh -huh. that in applying to and then accepting an mm -hmm. offer to work at a school, you could definitely be thinking about the race of the oh, principal. Sure. Mm -hmm. So does your mom, how would, how would you answer that question if a, re, if a reviewer posed it to you? So for, well, this is not a reviewer, ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so certainly um, I'm not arguing that I've uncovered anything causal here, for sure. Um, I, I, so, so we add the school fixed effect because we are more so interested in um, sort of, so well, I'll just talk about what my, my priors were. Um, we're thinking about the fact that black teachers turn over more, but they're also at different types of schools. Right. So that's more so what I'm thinking about here. Um, I would be open to suggestions to think about how we might um, get rid of that selection, but it, you know, the selection piece is kind of part of the story. Um, Maybe you could yeah. maybe you could illustrate maybe you could use the data on the new teachers and where they end up to talk about how much selection you think mm -hmm, there is mm -hmm, or something mm -hmm, like that. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I just meant as as someone who um, edits a education yes. policy journal, <laughs> yeah. um, I think that you know it's an interesting causal question, but you'd have to convince me that it's interesting if it's right. not for uh -huh. causal analysis. Right, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. As a non quant person who works with this person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Does the school 
Let's type account for the, that we know that you, I'm hung up on the charters being in here, and we know turnover is higher in, in charters. Uh huh. So does that account for it? Yeah. So um, so I'm just controlling for like charter magnet, all that. Stuff. Do you find that there's higher turnover and different effects for charters, or you said that's not part of this? So I, I did not look at the coefficient, but the district number is going to capture the charters. It's kind of hard to, I have not pulled the charters out yet because um, it's kind of wonky, but they don't have their own school codes. <laughs> so I have to do a little bit more research to figure out like who exactly are the charters. But that's definitely on our list of things to do for sure. But, sorry, going back, I think it's a huge assumption to say that the kids don't choose school because the kids have parents that are very active making sure to which schools they go. So I would argue that the selection issue is also very prevalent in the D study. Well, she should help your reviewer then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, be happy. But, but to that point, um, that, but that's also a weakness of the teacher match literature too okay. because people are you know people make choices right and people tend to self segregate so um, yeah so that's a that's a that's a great point okay um, so okay so about 36 percent of the teachers change schools um, at least one time over the course of the study for those who are um, for the subs in the subsample limited to uh, people who have black principals who are both black and white it's about 46 percent okay um, most teachers are race matched and gender matched um, and in the black principal subsample 18 percent of those teachers are race matched okay? um, which if you think about how many black teachers are in the sample it means that black teachers are mostly with well not most but I won't, I won't say that um, on average, teachers have about 13 years of experience, and about half of um, all teachers are in a Title I school. Um, and then black, um, black principals are more likely to be teaching at a Title I school, and about 60% of those teachers are, 60% um, of the teachers are teaching in a Title I school in that subsample. Okay, so here are the results. They're um, relatively straightforward. Um, so basically, this is, you can interpret this like how you would interpret a regular regression coefficient. Um, so you can interpret it as a percent change. And uh, basically what we find is that once we sort of throw everything in there, um, when you are race matched, you are less likely to turn over, but it's mitigated by adding the controls and the school fixed effect. Um, so... Uh, not super earth shattering, <laughs> uh, but but interesting uh, nonetheless. So we find this sort of consistent effect of if I have the same race teacher, I am less likely to turn. So then, um, so then we explore. Uh, we look at gender, and we don't find much of anything. Okay, but there's also a lot of not a, not a lot of movement on gender, right? Uh, because of the the nature of the the demographics of the workforce. So then the next thing we do is we look, we um, limit the sample to just those teachers who have a black principal. So this is just going to be white and black teachers who are, so this is really driving the, so these are black teachers who are, what's driving this are black teachers who are matched to black principals. And we find um, sort of similar results. Once you add everything in, they're two percentage points less likely to turn over um, when they are matched to a black principal. Um, and we don't find much when it comes to gender and in terms of when we limit the subsample to black principles. And that's because they are mostly women. There are not a lot of black, well, there are, well, this is similar to nationally, there are not a lot of black male educators in North Carolina. There's about 2,000 teachers and I actually don't know the principal number off the top of my head. But if you think about, there's like 100,000 teachers. It's 2% a, it's a, it's basically, so not much there. Okay, um, so, so then uh, we're in the process of conducting some follow-up analyses. Um, so, so the turnover within districts is just pulling that number out of the first table. And then the between districts is a, um, um, a, a similar effect. Um, and basically there what we're doing is instead of calculating that turnover variable from did you switch uh, schools, um, so the within is the did you switch schools, the between is did you switch districts, right, over the course of the time. And I actually want to, um, I'm going to spend some time um, 
unpacking that because we're interested. Uh, eventually, we'd like to get to the quality of the moves, and perhaps some of this can be captured uh, through that. So um, here's just the between district turnover. So similar model, um, also about that that three four percent difference. And those are I'm sorry. Are those are oh, the, is the constant there at the bottom? Like the constant in the bottom left? That's that's the turnover rate over the sample for for the X years. Uh huh. So then you would take them, you would subtract it off of that. Okay. So, um, so another thing that we did was we used the, uh, so North Carolina implements a working condition survey every two years. And um, it's basically teachers in, um, so you can't link it to individual teachers, but you can link it to schools. And so um, it has a variety of items around school culture. So for example, um, there's a leadership scale that's in there. And so it's pretty standard working conditions, school culture kind of thing. But basically looking at stuff like trust and support and um, you know, how effective do you rate your leadership, all these kinds of things. And so we just basically put these together in a scale. And so we did that for um, a, a bunch of different um, sort of elements of school culture from the survey. Now, I'll, give you, I'll say a couple of things. So one, there's, um, so it's only every two years, there's lots of missing data. Um, and what we did is we just used these as the outcomes for the race match model. And we didn't really find much by way of the working condition survey, but I actually would like some input on how we might um, use it better or differently. Uh, but here we were just trying to think about capturing the, um, the school culture, right, and thinking about school culture sort of over and above the, um, uh, what's available to us through the, the school controls. Um, and so here is just putting those different scales as the outcomes on the model, and we don't really find anything, although we do find that race match teachers are more likely to be in schools with higher growth. And that makes sense, right, because that's going to be driven by white teachers are matched to race, white teachers matched to race, white principals are more likely to be in higher growth schools. Um, so, but perhaps there are some opportunities there, but as you can see, there's lots of uh, missing data when it comes to the survey. Um, so is growth? So, sorry, so the growth piece is actually just um, whether the school, so this is not a part of the working conditions survey, it's whether the school met or exceeded its growth target for the year. Yeah. Sorry. So when I thought you were talking about mechanisms earlier, it was like what might explain why you see more turnover. Is that what you're trying to get at? That's eventually what I'd like to get at. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Because you could because I would use those. You could put these in like a mediation model. But that but if there's no relationship here, then oh, they're not exactly. gonna Right. So exactly. So I should go back. So okay. we actually did I did throw the leadership scale in the models uh -huh. and nothing happened. Yeah. yeah. But I'm concerned because of the missingness, but I don't want to necessarily throw this data away. <laughs> uh, because we do have it for so we have it for 2014, 16, and 18. Um, and so I'm un unclear as to um, how to use it. But when you do, so when I throw this scale into the previous models, it's not significant and the coefficients don't change. It feels like the way that you're stacking observations might all, I, I, mm -hmm. right? Especially if you've got two different survey waves, I'm not so clear on how that's working. Yeah, so basically what we're doing, um, so we tried it a, diff a, a couple of different ways, but the way I have it shown here today is, um, like if you're, like 13 and 14 get the same, like your school's gonna get the, the scale for those years, because uh -huh. that's kind of the best we can do. Right, yeah, so I was thinking, but maybe if you just like, just looked at the 14, 15 sample, and you've got the survey for those, mm -hmm. and then just followed those, as opposed, mm -hmm. it, it's a little, mm -hmm. I'm just a little bit, mm -hmm. especially because your outcome is ever switched. Right, 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 yeah. As opposed to switched in a given year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Yeah, just yeah, I'll keep playing around with that. So, uh, so just to give you a summary of the findings, um, so in the full sample, we have these LPM models that have a variety of controls as well as the school fixed effects. Being race matched to your principal leads to lower teacher turnover, and all of the controls, even though I didn't show them, move in the expected direction, so things like experience, um, education, all that stuff. Um, we don't find much by way of gender. 
Um, and then for the subsample of black principals, having a black principal ameliorates that turnover for black teachers over and above the controls and the school fixed effect, and there's still nothing for gender there. I will. So, yeah. Just quick thing. I love the way that you reminded the audience that this is descriptive work. Yes. Uh -huh. So I would be very careful with my. Oh, sure. It's the same effect. The narrative. Yes. 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 Sorry. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I, Thank you. I recently been involved with a project where we were implementing digital tools in about 60 schools in California. Mm -hmm. And it was over the course of three years, and we documented about a 30% turnover rate with college counselors, principals, and our district person, mm -hmm. which really affects like bringing in a digital tool, like if schools mm -hmm. can hang on to it. Mm -hmm. So I, I very much appreciate what you're doing here. And, I, and my question is going to be about practice. Yeah, sure. So ideally, uh, we're trying to build uh, school climates where uh, you're not losing teachers. Um, given that there's um, mismatched or different, differently matched uh, teachers and principals. What have you thought about how to like share your research in a way where, where uh, teachers and principals can go, okay, this is not the ideal situation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but given that we see there's better retention, what we can do to mm -hmm. you know, to improve a given situation? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so yeah, so I've done a lot of thinking about this on the sort of the teacher-student race match side. Um, on the principal side, um, so I, I think so I think a couple of things. So one, I think it's super relevant for how we train principals, right? Um, so I always like to think about this in terms of short run and long run. So long run, obviously, we want to work to get the workforce more diverse. In the short run, we kind of have the workforce that we have. And so I think there could be a lot done around principal training to at least help them to uncover biases that they may have. Um, because there might be, so, so I'll take a step back. So it's also sort of nuanced in terms of, um, uh, you know, teacher labor markets are highly localized, right? Um, so it's important to sort of ap approach it with thinking about the local context, right? So I think it's sort of a combination of understanding what the distribution likes in your, what the distri distribution of teachers and principals looks like in your local setting, as well as helping principals to uncover biases that they may have. Um, I think that the AP question is also um, super interesting because I did find that the AP population is more diverse. And so perhaps that's another way that leaders could deploy particular um, different administrators to, to fulfill the needs of different teachers. To get at the, so you've got the school fix effect, and mm -hmm. so that's getting, um, that's leveraging, um, so like, to teachers of different races mm -hmm. in the school with a given principal. Right. It could also be leveraging when a principal changes. changes yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if maybe trying to tease that apart mm -hmm. would help you get it mm -hmm. cause and effect a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, right, that would be kind of compelling, like if you showed that when a black teacher comes in, the white teacher's mm -hmm. play or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I have gotten that feedback before. Okay. Yeah, gotten that time to put it in there, yes. Uh, I think it'd also be interesting to see um, the school that these teachers are moving to, mm -hmm. are they, if you're leaving a um, racially incongruent mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. pair, are you mm -hmm. moving to one that is racially incongruent? Other advice to grad students interested in this yes. area of work? Oh, I have lots of advice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the biggest thing I would say is don't use the North Carolina data anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody uses it. Um, I would also say the point that I made earlier about, so I think two points. So one, different settings with um, populations that have not been spoken to, uh, I think is super important. Um, also probably more uh, feasible in a place like California. Two, um, it, uh, if you're going to use administrative data, it takes a long time. So if you're already at N year, I don't know what to tell you, but if you're like a, in, you know, if you're like a third year, Ish. You can start the process now to think about a district or, I think a state might be ambitious, but a district that might be willing to let you look at their personnel files to kind of look at, you know, the teachers and where they move and things along those lines. So those would be my two biggest pieces of advice. Um, I definitely think that the, uh, so I always get emails about, um, so I think what ends up happening when people describe the existing uh, body of literature is that 
we default to saying teachers of color, but most of the studies are really driven by black students, right? And so I don't know that it's a given that these relationships would hold for other groups in other settings. And so there's tons of opportunities for people to, to contribute, I, I think. So in the SAS data that I pulled, um, at least, well, I, I don't, well, you can't conflate the two, but at least for the principals in urban settings, they had less experience and less tenure at their school. But there, so I definitely, um, so I control for principal experience here because they have it, uh, but I can, I can break it out by race and see who, who has more or less experience as a principal. That's a great point. But uh, just kind of building off Adam's question about the school they're moving to, um, a lot of this data would be coming around the time of, there's a lot of money that went into Charlotte Mecklenburg and Iredell Statesville from right to the top, another mm -hmm. Obama administration yeah. priorities. I'd be curious if a better resource district, which might not be reflected in local income, would have an exacerbating effect or some mm -hmm. sort of additional effect on where teachers were moving to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, yes, that is a that's a good that's a great point. I'm not certain how salaries. I'm not certain how. <coughs> I would just have to figure out how local sort of supplements figure into the salary sure. calculations. But I, that's that, that's definitely something we could do. Yes. Yeah. I was thinking like because um, it would give them more resources for like professional development mm -hmm, and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great point. Maybe one more Thursday. Um, so the quickest way to answer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that way. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.